We've got Rangers. We've got Panthers. We got a very special post game uh, crossover edition here with Mr. Armando Velez from Locked On Florida Panthers. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back, Ranger fans and Panther fans. Uh, like I just said, special crossover post game edition here. Always a, a good time talking with my good friend Armando Velez. And uh, obviously, for us Ranger fans, a little bit nicer after a uh, pretty solid six to two win in Madison Square Garden uh, in, in this game here tonight. But uh, Armando. Like I said, man, always always a pleasure to talk some hockey. Uh, what do you think of uh, this game here tonight? And, um, you know, just kind of bigger picture. Panthers, obviously, you know, phenomenal season last year. They make all these changes and, uh, you know, scuffling a little bit, playing a little bit better recently, but uh, probably not where, um, you know, a lot of Panther fans hope they would be. So just your thoughts on everything here to kick things off. Yeah, John, thank you. Um, one, I, I want to say uh, at the top, uh, thank you once again for uh, doing another crossover uh, show with with me. I know we missed each other uh, last, last go around where uh, where it was New Year's Day, where the New York Rangers came into the FLA Live Arena and won five to three behind Yaroslav Halak. And, but this time around, the now the Rangers have won the season series against the Florida Panthers with one more matchup. And really the for 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 this game for this game it was just really about the New York Rangers being op- opportunistic uh, versus the Panthers not being opportunistic. I mean, you think about at one point in this game. I mean, the shot on goal advantage for the Panthers were was like eight to two at one point, and the Rangers get their first goal of the game via Adam Fox, um, where Gus Forsling misses on a poke check, and then Adam Fox just skates. Uh, right past them and then uh, beats Alex Lyon for that first goal of the game. And it's just like, you just throw your hands up. It's just like, man, uh, just missed opportunity. And I, I mean, it's, it's a, when, when you're giving, when you're giving uh, the New York Rangers, those type of goals. And then of course, with, even though Igor Shesterkin's not playing like God, like he was last season, I mean, he's still posting a 917 save percent. That's good enough to win a lot of games in the national hockey league. But when you're giving, a bunch like the New York Rangers opportunistic goals. And then that from the start as well, it's just, uh, you're, you're just asking for disaster. Yeah. I mean, it really was kind of a bizarre start to this game because, you know, the Panthers were out shooting them by a lot. And I don't know if I've ever seen a game like this, where at least for the first half of it, you know, the Rangers, I thought overall they, they were playing pretty well. I, I thought they were skating. Well, I thought they had the puck in Florida zone for a decent amount of time, but um, they just, weren't generating any shots. And, you know, on one hand, uh, I think you got to give some props to the Panthers for, you know, being back on their heels, but still defending well enough to, to limit the shots on goal. Uh, on the other hand though, man, you know, the Rangers coming into this game here tonight only had four goals or uh, excuse me in their last four games only had six regulation goals. So for a while there, it lo- was looking like it was going to be more of the same because uh, part of the issue is that the Rangers just have not been shooting the puck. Um, but it was nice to see them, you know, eventually, uh, rectify that situation, score a couple of dirty goals. You know, the third and fourth goals were kind of of the, uh, you know, wild scramble stuff and variety and, um, you know, pulled away as a result of those goals. But, um, you know, I think overall, you know, they, they definitely played well in this game. And, uh, you know, Gerard Gallant, old Florida Panther coach, um, he he's a little trigger happy when it comes to changing the line combinations. But then, you know, there, there's a game like this where everything's different and everybody's skating with somebody different and everything just kind of clicks. And, um, you know, obviously that, that was also the case in this one. Um, one silver lining though, Armando, that I wanted to ask you about because, um, you know, the Panthers coming into this game, uh, 18 for their last 48 on the power play. And then they scored again. So 19 of 49, uh, just on a heater on the man advantage. And with the Rangers, the exact opposite. I know they got one, uh, in this game here tonight, but one for their last 26, um, what are you seeing from the Panther power play? And I mean, how big is that going to be going forward if the Panthers are going to make a run at this thing and, and potentially be a playoff team? That's that's going to have to be what carries them for. And that has been what's carried them for 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 this team. I mean, I mean, and it's funny because of how they got tonight's power play goal. It's it's usually not one that they usually get. They got it right off the rush uh, with some crisp passing. Carter Verhey, um, Lundell. Uh, at two Lundell Verhage, which you thought that Lundell was probably going to take the shot and then he gets it over to uh, Verhage towards the right. And then now uh, Lundell and Verhage are both on four game point streaks now as as well. And, and you talk about switching lines. I mean, just last week where the Florida Panthers were on their West coast trip um, in, in the Colorado game, that's when Paul Marie started switching the lines, putting Anton Lundell on Barkov's wing on the top line after being a, quiet at times throughout the season 
and that's really what ha- has helped the Panthers. I mean, Sergey Bobrovsky before going down last week has been playing well as well. Uh, unfortunately, he the earliest he will be coming back is Friday against the LA Kings. We still don't know the status of that. And Spencer Knight just got recalled from from the Panthers uh, today after playing back to back games in the AHL on a conditioning uh, stint. So uh, the power play has to has to really uh, has to really uh, sh- show up for the Panthers and continue. And hey, the, the silver lining for the Panthers side of things is they got a goal tonight, um, and they uh, they also got a weird one uh, on the six on five in the in the third period where Paul Maurice uh, actually clarified why he went for the six on five that early as the Rangers iced the puck, and that was the uh, the time to to do it and. Right now, Alexander Barkov is on a eight-game point streak for for the Panthers as well, and usually he's quiet in the in the first uh, few uh, few months of the season. But he's been he he's also been showing up for the Panthers, and re- really right after the Christmas break when it all started, that's when the Panthers started getting healthy. That's when they started getting uh, wins together. And hey, seven three and one in their last eleven games now uh, for the Panthers, um, right? And the Bally Sports broadcast for the Panthers. Um, they actually showed a graphic of the last time the Panthers and the Rangers played where the Panthers were standing um, in, in, in the wild card race. And they were eight points, eight points behind Pittsburgh who they play tomorrow on a back to back. And now uh, prior to tonight's uh, prior to tonight's game, well, because the Panthers got no, uh, no points in this one, three behind uh, the, the Penguins as well. So, just that the power play and timely goaltending has been uh, the the what's gotten the Panthers to this point. Yeah, uh, you know, you, you mentioned the goalie situation a, a second ago. You touched on it. I want to ask you a little bit more about that in just a second, because obviously, you know, Bobrovsky's had his ups and downs since going to the Panthers. And, uh, you know, Knight is a, a promising young goalie who's, I think, had some mixed results himself. And, and Armando, I'm definitely going to ask you about that in a second. First, we got to let everybody know. Today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers and Locked On Florida Panthers is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers, join today to get started with $150 in free bets, guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet, just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. All on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, do not miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And uh, Armando and I certainly want to thank everybody for making Locked On Rangers and Locked On Panthers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And uh, Armando, like I said, man, just, just a second ago, you know, obviously you get Lion in, in net tonight, but I mean, he's not obviously the, the top choice there. I, I understand he's played well the two games before this, but, um, you know, Bobrovsky really has had his ups and downs ever since joining joining the Panthers and Knight, you know, a promising young goalie. Um, what's your take there? I mean, d- does, you know, if the Panthers are going to make a run at this thing, are, are they going to need Sergei Bobrovsky to be the guy and, you know, play up to uh, his contract and the way that he's capable of playing? Is he going to have to be the guy? He it's funny because he was the guy uh, for right before right before uh, getting hurt in the Montreal game last week uh, where he just he left after two minutes and then Alex Lyon came and um, the Spencer Knight hasn't played in the, in an NHL game since January 8th against the Dallas Stars, um, which we're expecting Spencer Knight to be between the pipes uh, tomorrow um, against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So. And but both of them have had their ups and downs, and it's funny because uh, when Bobrovsky was struggling, then Spencer Knight was uh, starting to get it going a, a little bit as well uh, for for the Panthers. And it's just they haven't. Neither of the goalies have had a long enough sustained run. But Bobrovsky is better when he uh, plays uh, 
big stretches of games. I mean, we see Igor Shesterkin uh, start four, and then and then Halak will take one, and that's really what it comes down to uh, for the Panthers. I mean, it's funny because if uh, Alex Lyon got uh, a, a win uh, against the New York Rangers, his nickname is the Lion King uh, for 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 the Panthers. I was ready to uh, kind of rename Madison Square Garden the Mid Scoff Theater uh, for for. Uh, <laughs> For if if uh, Alex Lyon were to a- a- able to win, but for for the Panthers going back to this game, um, it, it was just a lack of sustained pressure on Igor Sisterkin as as well. The Rangers were doing such a great job clogging up the middle and forcing the Panthers to uh, to their uh, perimeter shots as as well. And it's funny because the Panthers outrushed the, the Rangers tonight, and they still couldn't really get get their quality chances as, as well. And Igor was just in position uh, for, for that as well. And with, 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 with that, and also some boneheaded mistakes, the, the power play goal, just a dumb penalty by Nick cousins, cross checking Chris Kreider towards the boards uh, as well. That eventually ended in the uh, Zabanajad goal. And of course the third one where two, three hacks at it for, the New York Rangers and then Aaron Eckblad trying to just get the puck back in behind Alex Lyon accidentally gets uh gets the puck in of uh, goal credit to Vasey um as well and just a lot of silly mistakes for the Panthers but sorry to go on a tangent there going from goaltending but but it also relates to uh um not putting enough sustained pressure on Sisterkin as far as this game no, I agree for sure, man. You know, I, I thought overall the Rangers defended pretty well. I thought in the third period they came out with a good game plan. You know, I think more than anything that the thing that I like uh, the most about this win for the Rangers, I mean, the six goals are great. You'll take that every single night. But for the most part, I mean, unless I'm forgetting anything, they, they pretty much played mistake-free hockey. You know, they, it wasn't mm-hmm. a game where they were going to shoot themselves in the foot, beat themselves. Um, you know, both of uh, the Panthers' goals, in a way, sort of came on the power play. The first one was literally on the power play. And then the second one, of course, uh, you know, Maurice pulling the goalie uh, down by four goals with nine minutes left. But, you know, it's funny because people like in that situation, like anytime a coach does that, you go on social media and everybody's kind of making fun of the coach. But I like when coaches do that, like, because at that point in the game, you're down by four goals. Like if you're going to have any chance at a miracle comeback, like you've got to get a goal. You pull a goalie in that situation for the same reason that you pull a goalie if you're down by one and there's like two minutes left because at that point it's worth the risk. And um, I'm curious, man, does Maurice do things like that from time to time? Like, has he ever like pulled the goalie in some unconventional spots? Because, I mean, it worked. You know, they, they got a goal and had a couple of other chances as well. So I'm just curious if, if you've seen him do that in the past. Uh, not, not for a four goal differential. We've seen it with two. Um, I've seen it with two, uh, before with like seven minutes left, um, once, oh, wow. uh, but, not, but not like 10 minutes left, uh, for, <laughs> for, for this one. And honestly, uh, we've seen some, uh, questionable challenges here and there by, uh, by Paul Maurice. Um, there's just one a few, a few weeks ago that he was, uh, it was, it was against uh, Vegas. I believe it, it was that it was just like, you, you you go down you go down three two and then you lose it and then you're down on the power play but there's actually uh there's actually um speaking of challenges i thought that maybe on that fourth goal by the rangers where alex line had his uh his uh pad right on the line which this is why the initial call matters in in hockey as well where where the pad was right down the line. The, the, the blue shirts were consistently crashing into the net as well. And, and that's what the, the Lafreniere goal is what I'm talking about. And right. it might've been worth, it might've been worth challenging, but you just also, you couldn't tell you're down three goals at that point and just not, not enough to, to try to challenge it. So maybe he was thinking, Hmm, let's see, because this is so close. Maybe I can challenge it. No, not enough. Okay. Go six, go six on five on on this one. So he, he, he he's just like thinking before it happens. Uh, that which is, you know, and and the Panthers. Uh, your, your listeners might not know this, but the pa- the Panthers this season still do not have a win this season when they trail going to the third period. Yeah, I uh, they, they mentioned something like that on the MSG broadcast. And by the way, I had a very similar thought on the Lafreniere goal. You know, there was a lot going on there, just kind of a wild scramble. 
And even the Rangers, after they scored, were kind of like standing there like, uh, is that going to count? What, what are we doing here? Um, I, I was a little bit surprised that he didn't challenge. But, yeah, man, I, I actually wanted to ask you about that because, you know, my understanding is that was a big strength of the Panthers last year. It's one of the reasons why they won as many games as they did. Uh, you know, they came from behind and they won games, um, you know, in, in dramatic fashion uh, quite a bit. I realize, look, that there's been a lot of changes. Obviously, you got Kachuk now. There's no more Uyghur. There's no more uh, Huberto. But, I mean, is, has that been surprising for you to see them, you know, seemingly unable to do something that they did so well uh, this past season, the one before this one? Well, luckily for the Panthers, um, the way their system is built is they don't allow as many uh, rush chances uh, for the opposition, even though the the fifth goal for the Rangers re resulted in that as a result of uh, puck watching, where the, just the passes that Panarin was connecting to Zibanejad was just incredible. And it's funny to think that the Panthers at one point were trying to go after Artemi Panarin free agency in 2019. What what a what a time to uh, what a time uh, that maybe uh, Panarin and Bobrovsky could have uh, teamed up in Florida um, when when free agency was uh, going on. But with uh, with with the Panthers, I mean, just different different changes. But hey. Jonathan Huberto is not um, getting the point totals in Calgary like he was in in Florida. Look, it's looking like Mackenzie Weger is uh, the better part of that trade right now for for the Calgary Flames. I mean, and Matthew Kachuk is doing this five years younger than Huberto as well. You got him signed eight more years. His contract is lined up with Barkov as as well. He's the he's the Panthers representative in the All Star, which actually there was a video. Um, on Twitter today of the of Times Square advertising the NHL All Star Game and then it showing Matthew Kachuk right in Times Square. So I thought that was a pretty a pretty neat uh, feature that Times Square uh, uh, had with the NHL All Star Game. But and it's just been a treat. Uh, it's you know he's not the fastest skater, but the way he threats behind the net, he leads the league in passes from behind the net per game, and he has the shortest distance. Uh, uh, per per goal in the NHL as well, and you know it came with a lot of growing pains, but they've started to string a few wins together. Like I said, seven three and one in their last eleven, and and right there and right there right there in the race, they got a little bit of help tonight with the New York Islanders losing uh, to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And right now, I actually have the game on um, as as we're talking. Um, Buffalo and Dallas are tied, and and and. The Buffalo Sabres have a few games in hand on the Panthers. They're also on a back-to-back -back, uh, tomorrow. Right now, that game is tied 2-2 as we're recording. Yeah, I mean, that's that's obviously good news for the Panthers. It's going to be exciting. You know, last year, I mean, on one hand, you know, I'm a Ranger fan, you're a Panther fan. It was good that we knew that these two teams were going to go to the playoffs, but there was such a, a division between, you know, the top eight teams in the race last year and the bottom eight teams, we knew probably by this time last year who the eight playoff teams in the Eastern Conference were going to be. And it's not like that this year. There's a lot of teams mm -hmm. in the race. And, uh, you know, for better or worse for us, Armando, I, I think it's going to be a little bit more exciting as far as the playoff chase is, uh, is concerned going, coming down the stretch here. Yeah, I mean, I was – Boston just had to uh, to uh, go on on the tear that they, they have been on this season yeah. because everybody was predicting Tampa, Toronto, Florida, no specific order – as far as the Atlantic division, but l look what happens with uh, a Boston Jim Montgomery comes into the mix and they're, they're, they're in route to win the president's trophy. And if the Panthers make that last wild card spot, that's likely going to be the first round matchup for the Panthers. And it's, it's not going to be a fun one. Linus Allmark is having a Vesna trophy uh, season, uh, likely going to win it this year. Um, and the fact that Hampus Limholm, and Charlie McAvoy can be on two different pairs and have one of them on the ice at, 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 at different times too. That's another uh, dimension for uh, the Bruins. And also for the Rangers, the fact that you have the, the defensive pairs of Adam Fox on one and then Truba and Miller as the second pair as well, that that, that bodes so well for, for the New York Rangers and also helps protect uh, Shesterkin as well, which is an, another example of like what they did tonight. Yeah, they are uh, really deep at defensemen. It's interesting, man, because they 
seem completely uh, capable of developing their own homegrown defensemen. I mean, you could talk about now, Fox and Lindgren were both drafted by other teams, but they both made their NHL debut with the Rangers. And they've, you know, that that's an excellent top pairing. It's about as good as it gets. Uh, Miller looks like an emerging superstar and uh, Braden Schneider, you know, kind of an old school gritty uh, defenseman playing on the, on the third pairing. He's more than capable of playing a top four role. There's just no room for him with, with the guys you just mentioned, but yeah, man, uh, the defensemen, uh, I think Ranger fans feel pretty, pretty good about where they are there. Um, to change gears real quick though, man, you know, we, we were talking about, um, you know, the empty net and, and, you know, Paul Maurice's strategy there and everything. Did you think Igor Shesterkin was about to score a goal in this game here tonight? Did you think he had it? Uh, my, my, my heart was beating a little bit as like, no, we're no way we're going to see a goalie goal. And didn't he almost get one against the senators last year? Yeah, man. So I, I don't remember. Was it the senators? I, I don't remember which team it was against, but I do remember, you know, I had talked on here about how I think he's going to eventually get one. Uh, at some point during his career. And then I was doing something. It might've been like predictions for the second half or something like that. And I was like, man, I'm going to up the ante. Igor's going to get one this year. And then three days later, he almost got one. And if he had put one in there, man, that, that might've been the end of Lockdown Rangers. Cause I, I never would have taught myself after that, but yeah, man, I think eventually it's coming. And uh, man, that one tonight, I, I thought he had it. You know, you could tell it was coming too, because you know, the puck went on net and there weren't really any Panthers all that close. And you could hear the crowd start to, anticipate it and just you know fires it up into the air out of the out of the zone and i mean that couldn't have missed by more than like four or five inches so mm -hmm. yeah exciting times man I, I think eventually he'll get one but you're probably happy at least it didn't happen to your team yeah it, it, it sucks being on the receiving end of those yes, for sure yes. um do you want to uh let everybody know about our other uh wonderful sponsor here for today athletic greens yes uh th this episode is brought to you by athletic greens and our next partner is a product that i literally use every day and i started ag taking ag1 because like i say on my podcast and this is probably the first time the people on the locked on new york rangers uh feed is hearing this but south florida if there is anything about south florida that's very popular it's coffee and sometimes i drink too much of it so i need a little bit of, of a break from it so that that's why i started taking ag1 to 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 get away from the uh from the coffee so what is this stuff with one delicious scoop of ag1 you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food source superfoods probiotics and adaptogens to help you start your day right this special blend of ingredients support your gut health nervous system immune system energy reco re recovery focus and aging all the things right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition with just one scoop in a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Yeah, so... Good stuff. And uh, I wanted to also ask you, you know, we, we've touched, we talked about Paul Maurice, you know, a couple of times uh, throughout this episode, but, you know, obviously uh, the new coach in town this year. And I, I'm just wondering, man, because obviously he's a good coach. He's had a lot of success in a lot of different places that he's, that he's been. And I think eventually, you know, that will click there with the Panthers. Um, as you've mentioned, they've played a lot better recently. They're, they're kind of on a roll uh, coming into this game tonight, but I, I'm just curious, man. Like, first of all, how did you and the fans feel about that hiring and, um, you know, is there any heat on him just given the fact that they're not winning at the clip that they were last season, you know, as far as the fan base is concerned? I'm glad you asked. Yes. Uh, <laughs> when, when I guess the expectations of the fan base were extremely high, like President's Trophy high. Uh, and then when it wasn't coming to per fruition, um, the fan base was really loud, yelling, fire Paul Maurice. Uh, and, you know, there there comes the circumstances with this team more than just the coaching. And coaching is a part of why uh, this Panthers team wasn't performing well. But, you know, six, $6.4 million in dead cap money, you, you really you really were not in a position to re-sign Claude Drew or Mason Marchment. And it really goes back to really what happened the previous offseason where, where the Panthers – could have forced Keith Yandel to to uh for to scratch to scratch him and the players came to his defense and that could have possibly forced the trade which instead of buying him out which 
if there's one player that I think the Florida Panthers are missing, it's Mason Marchment. Um, more, more, probably more than Claude Drew, in my opinion. And that 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 dead cap money is weighing big time on the on the Panthers uh, for this season. You know, it's going to get cleared up this year as well for for the Panthers. And of course, the goaltending not performing too well. I, I mean, you, you look at Jack Adams' winners uh, for coaches. What do they have in common? Uh, they have good goaltending uh, behind them. And uh, maybe we see Jim Montgomery or Rick Bonus uh, w- win it this year, or even maybe uh, Dave Haxtall, even though his goaltending situation, uh, they're they're not performing at like, uh, I think they're performing like under 905, uh, both of them combined, but just about perform- most times when it comes to great coaching, what, what happens, good goaltending. And that's the situation um, as well with Paul Maurice and taking a little bit of time to mix up some of his lines as well. I mean, thank goodness he started doing that in the Colorado game last year because that's really the jump that the Panthers uh, really, really needed. And since the start of the Christmas break, they're number one in the league in uh, power play percentage or, or number two. I'd have to double check on that. But they're they're top two in, in the power play. And that's something that you asked earlier. And I mean, penalty kill. It's still it's still a major struggle for, for this team. I mean, they gave up a, a power play goal tonight. Um on on the night for against the against the rangers so that's still a work in progress i mean they're 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 kind of missing eric stall on that on that pk who, who right now is on ir after taking a brutal hit to the head by mike matheson last week which was which mike matheson got fined for but it wasn't a penalty called on the ice but just uh just the penalty kill unit for for the panthers just hasn't been there as well and that's really what's uh, hurting the Panthers I mean, because they're five on five numbers. Another example is tonight. They're five on five numbers. They dominate consistently, but sometimes it's also comes to those timely goals at five on five as well. Yeah, for sure. And, and it's funny, you know, you mentioned uh, Marchman and uh, Giroux and, you know, obviously the, the Panthers miss both of those players. Uh, something that I think you and your listeners will, uh, will appreciate here. I think the Rangers, you know, cause they, they made a lot of moves at the trade deadline last year. Didn't bring any superstars, but just a lot of really nice complimentary players. I think the one they missed more than anybody is uh, for, former Panther Frank Vetrano. And, you know, of course, he's with uh, Anaheim now. But um, Ranger fans really warmed up to him pretty quickly. You know, they bring him over, and he added a dimension to this team that they kind of lacked last season. And I, I think they're even lacking a little bit this season. Uh, that guy that just gets the puck and just fires it at the net and just has a really nasty shot shoot first ask questions later i mean that's frank vetrano in a nutshell uh plays a certain amount of feistiness that i think people like as well um so i definitely miss vetrano man but yeah um i I know what you mean because you know there's times this year vetrano and some of the other guys you know cop uh mott uh justin braun you know again no superstar players but these guys all came in and, and seemed to fit the rangers like a glove and i do think there's times where um you know the rangers have certainly missed those guys and um, you know, that kind of leads me into something else that I wanted to ask you about. Do you, do you see the Panthers doing anything at the trade deadline? You know, will they be buyers? Is there anything, is there any certain player you've got your eye on if, if they can, you know, um, you know, maybe, uh, make a couple moves here? Uh, right now the Panthers have a lot of, uh, players on LTIR and Anthony Duclair is designated to come back, uh, soon. Um, but after the Matt Pacioretty situation in Carolina, after after he, he, he him touring, tearing his Achilles again after coming back, the thing is with Pacioretty's injury, it happened after Duclair, and he came back earlier than Anthony Duclair. So these are some alarms that should be ringing around the Panthers' front office about being careful about bringing, uh, bringing Anthony Duclair back. And also Patrick Hornquist uh, suffered a concussion uh, towards the towards right before the Christmas uh, break. Um, and, and he, that was his second one this, this, this season, and he's had almost a handful of concussions. So right now, a lot of LTIR space. So, and the Panthers, most of the season before using that LTIR space, they've only been able to dress 20 players when both, when Hornquist was in the lineup. So right now they're, they're spreading thin when it comes to the cap. So it's going to be really hard. Sam Bennett was in, uh, trade rumors uh, about uh, and him and Sam Reinhart were in trade rumors about trying to clear up that space because they made a promise to Patrick Hornquist that they wouldn't trade him again. And that actually leads me to uh, Sam Bennett um, for this game. Um, he gets tangled up with Philip Heedle. Um, his leg goes in a direction that he's not supposed to go in uh, as he's going towards the boards. And I was, I was a little scared. We don't, I'm not going to speculate, but 
it did not look good. Thought it was going to be possibly something that would last a long time. And then he comes out for the second period as well, gives it a go, and then also doesn't return to start the third period as well. So a lot of cap gymnastics that the Florida Panthers have to um, man- maneuver uh, before they could even bring and um, think about bringing in someone. But what was your what was your thought on the on the collision uh, with uh, Bennett and Hedo? Not on definitely not on purpose. Not a slew foot by any stretch of the imagination, in my yeah. opinion. Um. Yeah. No. I mean, first of all, Philip Hedo is definitely not that guy. I mean, he, he's not. He's never had anything even close. I, I don't think to a a dirty play since he's been in this league and. Uh, he's in year five now, but yeah, man, that was scary. I, I really felt for Bennett when that happened. Just one of those freaky, fluky plays where you know two players are kind of turning in the same direction, and I mean, the next thing you know, their their skates are tangled. And man, the way he hit the boards, I, I mean, he, he just hit it really hard, and uh, the way his right leg was kind of stuck out, yeah, it looked pretty bad. And I mean, like you said, Armando, uh, I don't want to speculate. I give Bennett a ton of props for um, you know coming back into that game and trying to gut it out, but at the same time, man, like. You know, sometimes you got to you got to lose the battle to win the war, so to speak. And, you know, for Bennett, you know, the last thing that you want to see, even just as a hockey fan for me, and certainly you as a Panther fan, you don't want to see him go out there and try to gut it out um, just in this one game and then mess it up even worse and be out for even longer. So, um, yeah, man, props to him for for being tough as nails and and trying to, you know, battle through it. But, um, yeah, I I hope your team can get healthy soon, man, because, uh, you know, you don't ever want to be done in by injuries. You you want to – have your players out there kind of settling the score and, um, you know, kind of determining the fate of the team. You, you never want your fate in any sport uh, to be dictated by the fact that you've got more injuries than any other team in the league, whatever sport it might be. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Paul Maurice did give an update after the game uh, that he's likely out tomorrow against the Pittsburgh Penguins and, but could come back for the weekend. And, but if they have to hold him out with the all-star break coming up and over a week, which after tomorrow, the Pan- Panthers will be on a five-game homestand that spreads out through the All-Star break as well. So this is the difficult January that they're getting through. Of course, they took an L tonight, uh, but as be- even before going into tonight's game against the New York Rangers, we looked at the what is the most important game on the schedule. Um, the Tuesday game against the Penguins is the most important one of the schedule because uh, – that's the team you're directly behind. Of course, New York can still fall into a wild card spot um, as right now they're third in the Metro. But you're, this is the that tomorrow's game against the Penguins. That's the team that you're directly behind. Three points behind, but the Penguins do have, uh, I believe, three games in hand, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So tomorrow is the must-win game. And hey, couldn't ask for a better situation with Spencer Knight coming back, even though you're likely going to be without Sam Bennett. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, any anytime the Penguins lose, I'm, I'm pretty much a happy guy. So uh, good <laughs> luck to you in that game tomorrow night, man. And, uh, you know, I, I figure we could pretty much call it there. But listen, Armando, man, this is always a ton of fun just talking some hockey. And uh, I know we'll have round three a little bit uh, later this season. So, man, if you want to do another crossover, uh, I'm up for it as long as you are. Absolutely, John. Thank you so much for doing this. The next matchup between the Panthers and the Rangers will be March 25th at FLA Live Arena. So can't wait for that one. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, Ranger fans, Panther fans, uh, thank you guys, as always, for for tuning in. And uh, we will see you next time.